Good morning, everyone. Today we will read Numbers chapter twenty-five. I divide into a few sections: first one to three, and then first four to first nine, and then first ten to the end. These few verses tell us that the Israelites they fell. And how come they fell? The first section tells us the reason of their downfall, and then the consequence it caused, and which was the punishment of God. So let's have a look first at the origin. In the last few chapters, we can see that God,、uh, the Israelites were. In the spiritual high, a peak, because they gave thanks to God, and God dwelt with them. God protected them. Even Balaam couldn't find a stronghold to attack them or curse them. So they were in a spiritual high, a peak. But then today we see that they fell. Let's first read the first three verses. Now Israel remained in the Kazia Grove, and the people began to commit idolatry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel was joined to Baal of Peor, and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. What was their cause? The Israelites remained in the Kazia Grove. And、um, so they remained. That was the original language. They remained in the Kesia Grove or in Hebrew Shittim. They remained. They really liked that place. They decided after that place, they stayed in that place. They didn't want to continue to move on. Maybe、they wanted to set up their homes there, so since we remained, stayed, lived. Actually, the Israelites should be longing for the promised land, the land of Canaan. But when they stayed there, they decided after the place, they just wanted to live there in their hearts. Uh, they were changed. They should have been looking forward to going to their homeland. For us, a Chinese, our homeland is in our back. What, what do I mean? Like in the timeline, our homeland is in the past, and、um, life is in the front, in the future. But the Israelites, they were opposite. The homeland is in the front, in the future. They have never been there, so very different from our concept. Our homeland is where we grew up, where we were born. But for the Israelites, their homeland is not where they grew up. So opposite from us. So because. God was there with them, and they should be expecting, looking forward to having a better homeland. They actually had a peak, or they spy on the land before, knowing that it was a good land, flowing with flowing with milk and honey. So they should be really looking forward to going to the. Promised land, but now their hearts and minds have changed. They don't、um, really look forward to going to the good homeland. They were attracted by Shittim, so their hearts were changed. They desired after that place, and so the people begin to commit harlotry with the Moabite woman. Not just a physical idolatry, but more problematic was that 
these women invited the Israelites to sacrifice to their gods. And so the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So you see that our hearts first start to change. We don't look forward to going back to the homeland anymore. And then we are attracted by the world. So we should reflect in our lives. Do we also look forward to the kingdom of heaven, our eternal home? We should desire for it longer and more and more. Instead of less and less, then our life direction would be different. If the heavenly kingdom desire is growing less and less, but the worldly desire is growing stronger, then it'd be hard for us to keep drawing close to God through giving our tithes, and to worship, giving thanks. The world becomes bigger and bigger, and they will walk the worldly ways. So that was the problem of the Israelites. They joined with the Moabite women. That was natural. They liked that place, and so they would just interact with the people there and had a deeper relationship with them. And after the Israelites left Egypt, they had to adjust to a new environment again. In the past, they were nomads, shepherds, but now coming to this land, they had to start to learn about farming, about astronomy, um, trying to learn from the weather and the relationship with farming. But in the past, astronomy was connected with idol worship because man could not control the weather. And so that was natural. They were influenced by the people around them. And just like if we immigrate to a new place, we we'll absorb their culture and integrate with the people we go to. And the Israelites, they connected with the Moabites. Deeper and deeper, and these women invited them to sacrifice to their idols, and they ate their sacrifices and bowed down to their gods. So the Israelites went downhill spiritually. They had forsaken God and worshipped idols. And eat the sacrifices. And the Moabites, they worship Baal. And so, verse 3 says, though Israel was strong to Baal of Baal. Baal may be the name of the place. Baal, his name it means Lord. And Bell was in charge. They believed that Bell was in charge of harvest and fertility. And so the Moabites worshipped Bell, hoping to have good harvest in the farming. And so the Israelites followed the practice of the Moabites. But Baal worship actually involved a lot of idolatry. And so the Israelites were joined together in this idolatry to Baal. And Baal actually means gap. So Baal or Baal means Lord of the gap, which means this bow, this god, this idol could connect with heaven and earth. And so, as the Israelites 
John was thou of Peor, the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. Then, verse 4 to 9. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of the people and hang the offenders before the Lord out in the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. So God commanded to hang the tribe leaders because they led the people to sin and to join the hell of hell. And so they were responsible and accountable. The people just followed their leader, their boss. This is also important for us. A lot of brothers and sisters just follow the tribe leaders or the cell leaders. If the cell leaders cannot keep godly ways, the cell members also will not follow God. So as cell leaders, we must always reflect our spiritual life. And don't slowly stay in shittim, which means our hearts slowly desire and chase after the world. If you feel that your heart's desire for God has become less and less, then we must stay alert. Otherwise, there may be a twist, that uh, seems to be a very small twist or deviation, but as time goes on, that deviation will become bigger and bigger, and then will fall into a great sin. Adam couldn't find a gap to attack the Israelites. But in the end, Balaam didn't have to curse the Israelites. The Israelites just fell and sinned themselves. And God asked the people to hang the offenders. Why? This it seems so harsh. Well, because as the leaders, the authorities, they connect with the idols. They join with the idols and in the eyes of God, as God looks at the leaders, the tribe leaders, God could only see Baal. So God could not keep them. Otherwise, the whole Israel would fall beyond salvation. So God wanted to keep the other Israelites who had not sinned yet. So God said, verse 5, uh, verse 4, he told Moses, and Moses said to the judges of Israel, every one of you kill his men who are joined to Baal of the old. So this is a reminder for us as we worship the idols, as we join with the idols, then we lose our lives in the end. God has told us clearly the penalty of sin is death. So joining with the idols will only bring death and not life. And that's the end and the outcome of people who worship the idols, they must be killed. And verse 6 to 9, and indeed, one of the children of Israel came and presented to his brother a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping at the door of the tabernacle meeting. Now when Phineas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest saw it. He rose from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the men of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the men of Israel and the woman through her body. So the plague was stopped among the children of Israel. And those who died in the plague were 24,000. So that was a very sad story. 
Moses and all the Israelites were going in front of the door of the tabernacle because the trumpeters had to be hung. It was so sad to see that the leaders were going to be executed, and everyone was crying and wailing. Some of them may be regretting their own sin, or maybe some of them had relatives who died or who would be executed. And now, first step. Uh, first six, and then there was one in the sight of everyone before everyone when they were reaping because of the judgment. This man came and took a midnight woman back and show his brothers. Maybe he was happy to have a beautiful woman with him, and maybe he wanted to tell everyone, "Oh, I found my love." And then, so this man passed by before the eyes of the Israelites. So that was like totally inappropriate. You just imagine they were facing a great judgment, and in the eyes of everyone, this man publicly sinned. That was like a great challenge to God. It's like hitting God's face, totally ignoring God, despising God. So that was totally un unacceptable. And so, when Elias, the son of Elias, the son of Aaron, the priest saw it, he rose from among the congregation and went after the man of Israel into the tent. And this man didn't even recognize or realize that he was like, totally blinded. You may wonder, well, what an exaggeration! But actually, sometimes we are like that too. We know that God's presence is there, and we still sin. We know that God's eyes are on the whole earth, but we still commit idolatry and do something that is not pleasing to God. So actually, we are no different from this man. It's just that we do different things, and this time Phineas saw it, and so he rose and took a javelin in his hand and went after the man into the tent. Then imagine what the man was planning to do with the woman, and then so Phineas he took the javelin and burst both of them through the man and the woman, and the plague was stopped among Israel. So you can see the plague was actually going on in such a great judgment. This man could still sin publicly, and just imagine how angry God must be. Just imagine your son is doing something wrong, and then he's done something wrong, and then you're going to punish him, discipline him, and then suddenly he still doing something even naughtier, and. You will be very, very upset and angry. Just for example, you're scolding your son not to play.
video games and when you're scolding him, he takes the cell phone out and play the game. You must become so much more angrier. So, when Finia stabbed the man and the woman, the place stopped. But those who died in the plague were 24,000. So that's a very sad story in Israel. The trap leaders were hung, and then the plague men, uh, killed men. At first, they didn't have any blockage with God. They entered into promise. But then, as they started to connect, uh, join with the world, with Baal, with the idols, death came. So, it all depends on who we join with, who we connect with. If we connect with the idols, at first we may have some blessing and benefit, but very soon. We will have disasters. At first, when Israel is joined to Baal, they must receive some benefits, and they could enjoy the pleasure of lust, and they could eat and drink because of the sacrifices, and so for the Israelites. They were thinking, well, it's it's good to worship Baal. We can drink wine, eat meat, and it's so different from following Yahweh. To follow Yahweh God, we have to have the day of atonement, to repent, to weep before God. What a difference. Following in Baal, we can just be happy and enjoy ourselves. So we see that these are very different paths. One path is a temporary happiness that will bring death and plague. The other way will be true blessing. So let's read to the next section. Verse 10. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Phineas, the son of Elias, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned back my wrath from the children of Israel because he was zealous with my seal among them, so that I did not consume the children of Israel in my seal. Therefore, say, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace, and it shall be to him and his descendants after him a covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God and made atonement for the children of Israel. Phineas、uh, did this when he killed the Israel. Israelite and the mean, meeting in that woman and caught them in adultery. God said, Phineas has turned back my brow because he was zealous with my zeal. His heart was close to God. He saw what God saw. He knew what God loves and what God hates, and so he intervened on behalf of God. And this is very important. When he intervened on behalf of God, God's wrath was appeased. Sometimes it's like that too. When we want to appease someone's anger. And、uh, a side story, for example, a spouse is angry with someone else, and we like to be the peacemaker. For example, the wife is has a has a fight with the husband. Wife, and then you will tell the wife, "Oh, just be, just be considering,、um, 
oh, my mom, she's just an old person, and then your wife becomes angrier and angrier. But if we just try to understand the wife, understand how she feels, then we find Pastor Joshua always tells us that when Simo is upset with the coworkers, and then Simo is, is、um, scolding her. Coworker, if you want to help Simo, as the Joshua said, you cannot tell him, tell her, oh, don't be upset. And then,、uh, as the Joshua would say, okay, let's just fire.、It's、so bad. And then suddenly, Simo would say, oh, he's not so bad. He has a lot of advantages and strengths. And then she would not be so angry anymore, and the conflict will be resolved. The issue will be resolved, and because he knew he understood the heart of God, he stood on the side of God, and God's wrath turned back, and so. His mercy came to Israel. God was very happy because sinners had to had taken the sin away. And then verse twelve. Therefore, say, behold, I give to him a covenant of peace. From that moment, God had an everlasting covenant with. Family of Phineas, all his descendants will be priests because the priest, because Phineas、uh, had made an atonement for the children of Israel, and then. Let's have a look. Who was that Israelite and that Midianite woman? Verse fourteen. Now the name of the Israelite who was killed, who was killed with the Midianite woman, was Simai, the son of Salu, a leader of the father's house among the Simeonites. And the name of the Midian Midianite woman who was killed. Was caught by the daughter of Saul. He was head of the people of her father's house in Midian. So we see that this man, he was actually a tribe leader. His his name was Simai. He was supposed to be the leader. But he committed sin in front of everyone. Simai, the name means musical. Maybe he had the gift of worship. Maybe he was the worship leader. The worship leader commits this idolatry in front of the senior pastor and all the congregation. Just imagine. How terrible that would be if he was not disciplined. All the brothers and sisters may commit adultery like that too. He didn't hide away his sin. He did it in front of everyone. So that was really significant. It could not be ignored. And the name of the Midianite woman was Kos Kosbi Kosbi, and her name means vanity.、Um, so she must be attractive, and she could. Ties others, and her father was also a head of her people. Simai 
He was attracted to Prosper, maybe because she was beautiful, and also because her father was a leader. So maybe he was thinking that they could have a political alliance. Um, marriages in the past always had a political intonation. And so these, maybe he was going after the way of the world, thinking that two leaders could ally together to be stronger. And so, verse sixteen. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, "Harass the Midianites and attack them, for they harass you with the schemes by which they seduce you." In the matter of Beor and in the matter of Kosba, the daughter of a leader of Midian, their sister, who was killed in the day of the plague because of Beor, the God said, "You must revenge the Midianites." And Taught them a lesson because they harassed you with their skin. In the previous chapters, we see that the Moabite king Balak, when he hired Balaam, he aligned with the Midianites. Moab and Midian. They were alliance, and they wanted to incite, seduce the Israelites to sin. Actually, the Moabites were born out of idolatry, and so idolatry was the greatest stronghold in the people. And so, when they Tried to curse the Israelites through Balaam, it was not successful, and so they went back to the power darkness of the people, the source of their force, the power of darkness, idolatry, and so the Moabites aligned with the Midianites, and they seduced. The Israelites rejoined with Baal, and so it ended up this way. Thank God, because of Bidinus. Otherwise,、um, can you imagine? Maybe the plague would go worse, and Bidinus actually. Uh, it's related to new crop. Before Pastor Joshua,、uh, before yeah, when Pastor Joshua was considering whether we should send me and Rita to start a church here because they missed us. And one time we were having a morning devotion, and we read about Phineas. And then Pastor Joshua asked me to read the response, and I had to prepare in a short time. And then I suddenly thought about doing a prophetic act, so everybody. Can have a great impression about this story, and I asked the coworkers, "Can you take a javelin from the children's church, and then we can act out this story?" And then Zimri he presents musical. So someone told me I have a guitar which is broken. I cannot use it anymore. Maybe you can take it as a prop. And then the coworker told me I cannot find a javelin, and so I didn't.、Uh, and then I just thought of an idea. 
because my name is a dino, which means juggling, cannot find a pop. So I just turned myself into a juggling. I told them, stand behind me, let's pray. And then when you feel、um, lack, or feel touched, and then you push me forward, and then I will break the guitar like the juggling being thrown out. Then the fight will stop. So we did that prophetic act, and that morning, everyone was touched. He said that the picture was very vivid. And then, as I returned to the office, I saw Pastor Joshua, and he told me, "When you jump out, I know that God spoke to me. I want to send you out to." God wants to send you out to Central as a juggler to put you into the land of Central. So to stop the play and to make atonement for the people. And so Pastor Joshua decided to send me out. It will probably be like a juggler to stop the play and also. Um, make atonement for the people, and that was the beginning of new crop. How God led us. May God help us to be close to God. And we should be central to bring salvation. We would be stuck to this land at the juggling to stop all the sin and the power of hell. We cannot use every one of this, so we can fulfill God's will among us. Amen. God is a jealous God. God is a holy God. God is a jealous God. God is a holy God. Let's honor the Lord, praise Him for this attribute. He's a jealous God. He's a holy God. He's God. We honor you. We come with a fearful heart because you are God. We look up to you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we need you. Just like what the pastor just shared, the role of the need, the special connection with New Crop. So, Holy Spirit, please shine your light in us and give us revelation so we can understand the will. This time, this carol time, Holy Spirit. Give us revelation. So we are not an outsider. The plague. We are in the midst of this plague in the world. So give us revelation. Spray tongues to go into the scripture. Not in the reasoning level, but in the spirit, as the Holy Spirit to reveal as His will. He is. He knows the heart of God. He's the Holy Spirit to lead us into the will of God.
wants to connect with you. Connect with you. Let me stop the plague. Help us know your will. Lord, we thank you. We have been reading the church through the Book of Numbers. We know your will more. God, we thank you. What are sisters? Remember in chapter sixteen, also mentions about the plague because of the rebellion of Korah. It brought the plague. You know that Aaron the priest he took the censer. To make atonement for the people to stop the plague, he said he stood between the living and the dead, and the forty thousand seven hundred men died because of the incense from the censer. He made atonement for the people. At that time, the plague was caused by rebellion. Today, the plague was caused by. The connection with the idols and idolatry. So let's check and reflect ourselves. Who do we connect to? To the world, or what? Pastor Jordan reminds us that Israel's homeland is in the future, but then. Are we also like that? Do we choose without reasoning and security? We find our way out, and we forget about the future homeland. Maybe it's our finances, our family. We're finding our own way out, and then become distant with God. Do that. Going to the morning devotion, praying. Reading the Bible, going to worship Sabbath and cell groups. It's not really so practical. I think that it's more important to work, to find a way out. And so we grow distance from God and connect with the world. So let's take the opportunity to confess our sins and we. Time to forego. Forgive us. We confess that in the environment, we so gradually feel that it's very hard to pursue things of the kingdom. We think that we need to be practical, just like the scripture says that they saw what was practical. So they desired after the place, and they wanted to stay there. In Shittim, in the worldly place, and we confess we have belittled you in our personal prayer and worship. Has dropped out. We think that. Giving a tire going to sell goods and draw close to God is not practical. We have started to connect with the world. Please forgive us. We will turn to you and confess our sins. Please forgive us. 
especially if we are tribe leaders, cell leaders, we are the head of the family, we are leaders. We repent before you. Please forgive us and help us to give our corruption, our love for the world, despite your promise. I'm not sure if your promised land will come true. We haven't believed. We have abandoned you. Please forgive us. And please cleanse our sins by your precious blood, Jesus. Do not look upon our sin. Give us a heart that is willing to change. Help us to see how we can connect uh, who we connect with help us to know that you are a jealous God so that we don't just think that we can live in your grace and forget about your justice and that you are God of jealous you are jealous God you are holy God you are the Lord and thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name, Amen. See that Aaron used a censer to make atonement for the Israelites today. You see that Phineas, the son of Phineas, executed this. Sometimes we have fear of man. We just want to be a good person. We don't want to deal with issues with man. That should be behind it is some fear. Today we see that Phineas stopped the plague because he was willing to take action and deal with the problems of man. So let's first pray for ourselves. We must take up our position to speak up and to deal with the issue if we just suppressed. And that's not the will of God. As parents or authority, as our leader, it's a position we need to deal with the issues of our subordinates, but we have not done that. And that's also a cause of plague. And God's anger will continue until the fears rose up. So let's check our hearts and pray for ourselves and stand in the right position to do what God has wanted us to do, to deal with the problem of man problem of sin, we are bold enough to deal with it. Ask God to give us that boldness and courage to have a heart to fear God. Give us, we suppress a lot and have a lot of fear and afraid to deal with the personal the people's issues and sins. Today, you're telling us this will cause a plague to happen. Please forgive us that we have no treasure, the position you've given us. Lord, give us a heart of Phineas. And we can take action to have the ability to execute. And we cry out to you. Ask that you give us the boldness and the faith so that your plague 
will stop. Your anger will stop. Let's pray for Hong Kong. Hong Kong government. Does it have the power of execution to do fulfill our position? Do of the problem of men. We pray for Hong Kong, the government, or the private companies. They can execute different problems of injustice, of idolatry, of illegal matters. We are willing to execute those actions according to God's will and according to human conscience. Should fulfill the responsibility and not to escape, not be a man. Pray for Hong Kong. See what is right and what is wrong, and not take for granted your grace. That's Hong Kong. The government and all the private companies to have heart to clear you and to do everything according to your justice. Thank you, Jesus name. Today in the book of Numbers, chapter twenty-five, Phineas goes out to kill Simrai and God's wrath and the plague stop. Today God sent us out. We are the church of God. We are the Phineas of Hong Kong. Let's enter the spirit to receive the anointing of the Phineas. Should jealous of God, God is jealous of us. Draw close to the Father God's heart to know what God likes and what He hates. What He likes and what He does not like, you need to understand and realize that to the same part as God to intercede for the land of Hong Kong, to stand in the gap, stop all the plague and all the sin. To the spirit to pray, receive by faith the anointing of Phineas. Jesus Christ's name, I release the anointing of Phineas into every brother and sister. Receive by faith. Receive the anointing of Phineas. Who can stand beside God to have his heart. Stop the plague. To stop all the sin. So God will turn to His people. In Jesus' name, the anointing of Phineas, Lord, Your power be with us. Your Holy Spirit, give us this anointing, so that chapter twenty-five, this verse will come true to us. That says. Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace. I give to New Crop brothers and sisters my covenant of peace, so that to New Crop and our descendants after us a covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because 
we are still as well our God and make atonement for the people and proclaim that these births will come true. Stand between the living and the dead to stop all the sin and plague. Give us the anointing of intercession and faith and authority to us. So we can rise up to be the Phineas of this generation. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Our morning devotion will end in the middle of bless you.